Hello YouTube, Dave here again, and uh, just thought I'd try something a little different uh, this week with this video. Uh, first of all, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, one of the things that I really enjoy, and for those who know me, uh, they know that I'm a huge fan of the Legend of Zelda series. So I got a ton of stuff uh, for it, and uh, it's been my favorite video game franchise pretty much since uh, Ocarina of Time came out. Uh, I got it for Christmas in 1999, uh, the year after it came out, and it's been my favorite game pretty much ever since then, even to this day. Uh, I've gone and played through it uh, a fair number of times. The reason I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, this is basically because of the game that came after uh, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and that was Majora's Mask. Uh, this game is probably my second favorite Zelda game of all time. I used to play it uh, quite a bit, and uh, when I was in my couple, last couple of years of uh, high school, Basically, I would just kind of go back and forth between playing uh, Ocarina and then uh, going into Majora's Mask. So the reason I don't have my copy of Majora's Mask anymore is I had lent my N64 out uh, to one of my exes when I was with her. Her daughter really liked uh, Zelda and never got to play Majora's Mask, so I was like, okay, well, you can keep the, the system until she gets a chance to play through it, and I never got it back, uh, which sucks because it was the holographic uh, label versions, collector's edition. Uh, complete in box, manual, everything. So, you know, it's kind of a sore spot for me. And it took me a long time to actually get Majora's Mask back. I went through and uh, tried to find <clears throat> this here, and it was almost impossible. This is Collector's Edition, which has uh, the first two for the NES, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask. And to find this was an absolute struggle. Uh, went, went online and it just it didn't go well. I spent a lot of money trying to get this, but I finally did and it was fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I uh, moved back uh, in November of 2013, and when I did, I couldn't find my GameCube memory card anymore, which really sucks because I didn't think I'd get to play it anymore. So I went out, bought a $20 uh, gift card for the Wii, downloaded the first two Zelda games, and uh, Majora's Mask again. So I guess the reason I'm bringing all this up is I want to talk about uh, what came out just a couple days ago, and that is Majora's Mask for the 3DS. Um, I also have here Ocarina of Time for the 3DS as well, and I was really expecting it to be pretty much the same thing. Uh, the <laughs> Ocarina of Time was basically just an update to the graphics uh, to look more uh, more crisp and, and clean instead of the uh, kind of the polygonal uh, N64 graphics, so it was a huge step up for that, and absolutely loved it, played through it, and uh, <clears throat> I was really looking forward and hoping that this was going to come out, and for years, you know, there was rumors of it, there was talks it might be on the, the Wii U, which I don't have yet, so I was really looking forward to this. Now, this video isn't going to be a review of Majora's Mask as a whole. The reason for that is I do actually want to do some videos where I talk about each of the Zelda games. So I'm going to save the review for Majora's Mask for that, but for spoilers, I absolutely love the game. This is going to be basically a review of just the 3DS version and if it's worth it uh, or not. So, you know, if you haven't played it, the Majora's Mask yet, you know, I apologize because I'll probably be referencing things that you don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, for people who have played it, uh, I think it's important that, you know, I wanted, there were a few things I wanted to talk about. Uh, first of all, this is not just a, uh, a shiny coat on the, uh, on the same old game. They actually did make quite a few changes. I haven't played it all the way through yet. I have only gotten through the first two temples. But uh, what I have gotten through so far, I've really enjoyed. And the, you notice the differences pretty early on, uh, especially with the save feature in the game. Uh, for those of you who uh, played the N64 version, you know there was only two ways to save. There was the uh, using the Song of Time to go back to the dawn of the first day, because the game has like a three-day mechanic where you keep looping and, and repeating. And if you get too close to the end of the third day, then you have to basically go back to the dawn of the first, and you, you lose some things like your ammunition, any rupees that you didn't save at a bank, and things like that. So that was the one way to save, was to play the Song of Time, and go back to the dawn of the first day, or they had these owl statues, which you could use. Now, with the statues, it was a one-time save, so when you go back to the dawn of the first day, 
you know, you could play it, turn it off without doing anything, and you would go back to the time that you last used the Song of Time to go back to the first day. With the statue, as soon as you loaded that save, it was gone. So if you load the save and something happened, you turned off the system, then it would go back all the way back to the time that you used the Song of Time last. Uh, it was kind of uh, a pain that way because, you know, let's just say you just started playing, the power went out, you would lose a whole bunch of progress. And uh, just a second, I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. There we go. Uh, so with this one, you can actually save anytime and it doesn't have involve you having to go back in fact playing the song of time to go back to the first day does not save the game kind of an important thing to know because i had gone through uh, all the way um you know gotten the ocarina back got to the point where i could uh, you know i played that song went back to the first day and i just shut it off because it's like okay so i went back to the dawn of the first day and i'll just pick it up from there so no that didn't work i had to play the whole thing from the beginning uh, again which which kind of sucked but you know i got through it uh the owl statues that are scattered throughout <clears throat> you can save that they still you will function as sort of like a warp feature uh, and then there's other save points scattered throughout as well, including at the start of dungeons, which is really kind of handy. I, I like that aspect of it quite a bit. They have made some changes to the dungeons somewhat. I found that in the first uh, dungeon in particular, some of the fairies, like the stray fairies, were in different positions or like one was inside an enemy that I don't think really had one before. So they changed it up a little bit there. So if you have the old... Strategy guide, for example, it's not really going to help as much as, uh, you know, you would probably hope it would. Um, so there was that. Uh, the guard that gives you the stone mask is in a completely different place. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but he is in a completely different place. So don't go to where you would go in the N64 version looking for it. Um, and the bosses so far, the two that I fought, are different and in a good way. The boss at the end of the first uh, dungeon was, you know, kind of cool looking, but really easy. In fact, if you actually, if he got anywhere near uh, a bomb flower blast, then that would basically take him out. So he's a lot more durable in this one, and you have to use slightly different different tactics. Uh, the second boss was uh, one that you'd basically just roll around as the Goron Link using your spikes, and you would just kind of take his legs out and uh, hit him while he was down. You still kind of do that, but there's something that you have to attack on his back, and you have to use your bow and arrow for it. So that gives you free arrows as well as free magic. Which is, again, pretty cool. So I like the fact that they changed the bosses quite a bit to make them, uh, you know, they're still, it's not necessarily that they're more difficult, but there's a little bit more to them, which I really like. Uh, and I haven't gotten into the Water Temple yet. Um, so all the changes there are pretty positive. Um, I don't, when it comes to the transformations, the Zora Link doesn't swim at as fast speed like he did in the N64 version. He swims at more of a normal pace. And if you want to get that uh, that fast swimming, you have to use your uh, your electric shield, basically, which depletes your magic energy. Um, speaking of which, they give you your magic energy at the end of the first dungeon if you get all the fairies instead of just the uh, the sword swirl. So they switch that up a little bit, so you have access to more magic earlier on in the game because you kind of go through a little bit more of it, um, which is which is fine. the uh, The inventory is uh, still pretty much the still pretty much the same it doesn't there there was no pause feature at the beginning of the game unless you actually clicked on the inventory tab so you have to click on the items or the um, the masks or your gear you actually had to click on the screen itself instead of just uh, pressing start and then scrolling through the menus um, when you get the uh, the bomber's notebook that's where the start feature comes in now the bomber's notebook is actually pretty cool because you actually just end up getting it when you turn back to your normal form uh, the uh, Happy Mask Salesman found a copy that looks like it belonged to the Skull Kid because it was alluded to that the Skull Kid was part of the Bombers at one point. So you get his notebook, uh, you get it for free, it already has the code written in it so you don't have to worry about memorizing it or going through the minigame to fight and find the kids again, which you can't use the, uh, the Deku Nuts that you could before. It actually specifically states that they're not fair and you can't use them and two of the kids are actually in different positions which is really neat. Um, so like the, it's just quite a few, uh, quite a few nice changes that way. I think, um, another thing with the, the notebook I almost forgot was you can set 
reminders for when certain events are going to take place. So if you have to be somewhere at a particular point, you can put a reminder an hour or two ahead of time so that it gives you time to get there. The double song of time, which you had in the N64 version, which essentially let you skip from wherever you were to the next 12 hour segment. So if you were during, if you were playing during the day, daytime of the first day, you would play and you go to the night of the first day, which if it was like 5.30, for example, on the clock, and you wanted to get to 10 to get into a particular area, you would have to either wait for, you either have to wait it out, or you could play the song, double song of time, which would only take you to six. So you can actually set it, which is great. It's still within a single day, so you can't go from the dawn of the first day all the way to the evening of the third day. But at least you can have a little bit more leeway. You can just skip ahead a couple hours if you want, which makes a lot less uh, waiting around time, which is really cool. I just completed the quest with uh, Anju and uh, and Kathy, which is a big one. It's a long one that takes a you know spans over the course of the three days, but it didn't feel like a long, tedious quest because I could just skip ahead a few hours when I needed to. Um, if you are a fan of the original N64 version, this is absolutely amazing, and it's different enough that it feels fresh. Um, you know, we had the uh, the Ocarina of Time one, which was a straightforward port, but this one actually kind of addressed some of the minor issues that I think some people had with the N64 version. I uh, absolutely love it. I uh, can't wait to get back into playing it, and the good news is is that it works with the original 3DS. So it's not something where you have to, uh, you don't have to get the new 3DS version that they have out, which I like, because I just don't really feel like buying a whole new console at this point. This one works perfectly fine for me. I don't have any issues with it, so I'm glad I didn't have to spend another $250 you know, just to play this game. Although if I had to, you know, it may be worth it in the end, but it's it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I love it. If you're a fan of Majora's Mask or you're a fan of Zelda in general, you know, pick this up. This is absolutely great, and uh, you know, I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you're and if you're new to uh, to to gaming, you're just kind of new to the Legend of Zelda series, and this is still going to be an absolutely fantastic buy. Um, again, you know, I apologize for not really getting into the story per se or getting into a lot of the more precise uh, mechanics. I, I, I did kind of use a few vague terms when I was talking about the game. Uh, the reason for it is that I do actually want to start up a series on The uh, the Legend of Zelda. I did some uh, written reviews on Facebook uh, a few years back, and I think I just kind of want to do some videos where I talk about them. Uh, I don't have any video capture equipment, so it's just basically going to be me talking. So, you know, if, if you want to just consider like a podcast type of thing, then you can certainly do that. Uh, most because I don't want to go through the process of uh, recording footage, which I'm just using on uh, the camera that I have here, which is basically just a picture camera that I'm using to record video on. So it's not going to look very good. And then I'd have to go through the process of uh, applying for uh, rights to review the games. And if they're not on the list, then that's going to be problematic, right? So, because um, I do monetize these videos. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to talk about the actual particular stories at some point. You know, I want to review all the different uh, Zelda products that I have because I do have quite a few different things. And it's just it's just been my favorite video game series for quite some time. Anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, uh, give some praises to uh, the new version of Majora's Mask because I think it's fantastic. And, uh, you know, go out and pick this up. Uh, you know, if you have, leave a comment below if you like the changes or if you think some of the changes aren't necessarily very good. Let me know. I think it's all around a, a very positive change. So uh, thank you very much for watching YouTube, and I hope you enjoy your day.